This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. We're number four. We're number four. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way Through Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So first off, (laughs) our Emmy prediction results. Let's just say it didn't go well. No, no it didn't. (laughs) We missed on Variety Talk series. Uh, You were right on Outstanding TV Movie. Oh, Bessie. Uh, Animated Program, we were both wrong. Over the Garden Wall, which I've never even heard of. Yeah. Won. Voiceover, we were both wrong on. Hank Azaria won. I think he's won multiple times. Yeah. Uh, guest actor, you are also right for Be- Bradley Woo-hoo! Whitford in a, in a comedy series. Two for me and none for you. So far, yeah. And then we had guest actress in comedy series. We were both wrong with Joan Cusack. Uh, outstanding comedy actor in a comedy series. We were both right for Tony Hale. Okay, I'm still one up on you. Yes. Or two up. Uh, outstanding supporting actress in comedy. We were both wrong. Allison Janney in Mom. Yeah, I just didn't want her to win for that. Right. Okay, go ahead. We were both right, again, for outstanding lead actor in a comedy series for Jeffrey Tambor. Um, we were both wrong on outstanding lead actress in a comedy series for... Amy Poehler was ripped off. <laughs> Absolutely. It was Julie Louis-Dreyfus that won. Using the standard rule of once you've won once, they yes. just keep giving it to you. Yeah. Outstanding guest actor in drama, Reg E. Cathy, which we neither of us picked. Guest actress in drama, Margot Martindale, neither of us picked. <laughs> uh, outstanding supporting actor, Peter Dinklage, neither of us picked. Supporting actress uh, in a drama series, Uzo Aduba. The new Lou Grant. Or the Ed, new Lou Grant. Ed Asner, yes. Yeah, the new Ed Asner. Uh, neither of us picked. Outstanding lead actor in a drama series, John Hamm, you picked that one. Outstanding lead actress in a drama series, Viola Davis, neither of us picked. Comedy series, Veep, neither of us picked. Drama series, Game of Thrones, neither of us picked. Results, Mindy wins 5-2. to two. <laughs> But there were a lot of misses. Yeah, <laughs> but I still beat you. Yes, yes you did. Now, on to our main topic. With the 500 channels and countless internet options to choose from, it's hard to remember... When we only had three network choices. We had ABC, you had CBS, you had NBC. Uh, you know, there was always PBS, too, but that didn't count. Right. Yeah. It took until 1985 before an attempt at a fourth network survived, which is, of course, Fox. Mm -hmm. But there were many attempts before that. And there were a lot of what they called ad hoc networks, where studios and producers got local stations to agree to show the same movie at the same time. But that really doesn't count as a network. So that was sort of like um, an early start at something like a TBS or something like that. Right. And then there were a number of discussions that never materialized due to money or legal issues. Really not a network. Mm -hmm. And we really don't have time to discuss them. We're going to concentrate on networks that actually made it to the air Mm -hmm. on a a continuing basis, at least at first. Mm -hmm. Starting with... The Dumont Network. I've heard of the Dumont Network. 1946 to 56. But it was dead before I was born. Yeah, so they duped it out with the big three networks until 1948. And at that point, the FCC was worried that things were getting out of control with television. And so they froze new station licenses, which was supposed to be for six months and lasted four years. So, until 52. And when it was all over with... Each market, conveniently, only had three stations on the more popular VHF band. Now, you kids may not understand VHF versus UHF. VHF was channels through 2 through 13. Mm-hmm, and that was the big top knob. The big top knob. And you could just actually click to go from station to station on that one. Right. Okay. And then there was UHF, which was channels 14 through 83, which... <laughs> on my TV at the time, at least I remember, there was like a bigger knob and you kind of really had to adjust for your <laughs> yes. HF stations. Yes. <laughs> and that left Dumont to use the barely implemented UHF band. It wasn't until the 60s that most TV sets even had a UHF band. And that would explain then why I used it, because in the 60s, that was when I was watching TV when right. I was little. Yes. So they stumbled along for four more years before giving up the ghost on it. Some of their shows... Where far, where it was Far Away Hill, which was the first television soap opera. Okay. 
Cavalcade of Stars, which was the first Jackie Gleason show. Which could have really made them some money if they had... had but uh, the trouble was, because they didn't have money, they couldn't keep Jackie Gleason. Yeah. So anytime they had talent, it, <laughs> went, out the it door. went out the door for more money. Mm -hmm. And Life is Worth Living, which is an early religious program. And Captain Video. <laughs> now, one of their stations was here in Columbus, WTVN, now WSYSX6, which was is... an ABC affiliate, yeah. was originally a Dumont affiliate. Okay. Then we have Paramount Network, or uh, per, sorry, Paramount Television Network, 1948 through 56. Which is not the Paramount I was thinking of, okay. No, no there's, there's more than one. <laughs> There's affiliates in L.A. and Chicago, and then they worked out a deal with Dumont to use some of their affiliates. Like, they'd share affiliates, hmm. which used to be a big thing. Yeah, I sort of remember that with some other ones. So. There was a station over in eastern Ohio, and I think it was Steubenville, that shared ABC and CBS in the 70s. And so what they'd do is they would actually, whatever was the higher rated show, that's what they'd show. So you it'd be like, never do that happy now. days and then MASH. <laughs> so the whole Paramount Television Network fell apart, which was another reason Dumont went under. Mm -hmm. And they ended up being more of a syndicator of shows to local stations. And of course, Paramount became huge yes. in television syndication and producing TV shows. We have the NTA Film Network in 56 going through 61. Had a large number of affiliates, but again, more of a syndicator than a network. 20th Century Fox was a half owner of it. Their New York affiliate, and this is why they're probably the most notable, is where some of their stations ended up. Their New York affiliate was sold to Educational Broadcasting and later became the flagship station for NET, which became PBS. Okay. WNET in New York became flagship for PBS. And their LA affiliate would eventually be the flagship for the first one that survived, Fox. And we have the Overmeyer Network, or ON, 65 mm. to 67, created by conservative Daniel Overmeyer, who wanted to get rid of smut on TV. Because there was so much smut on TV in the early 60s. I dream a genie. <laughs> you can see her stomach. You can't see her navel, though. By the time they actually got on the air, they were already renamed the United Network with only one program, The Las Vegas Show, starring Bill Dana, so which was like a variety talk show. So how could you get a network on with one show? You couldn't. <laughs> the show and the network only lasted 106, stage, 106 uh, episodes. <laughs> Paramount Television Service, 1976 to 79. I'm not repeating myself. Yes. This was Paramount's second attempt. Yes. So their success in producing TV shows gave them confidence, oh, maybe we can make this work. And their centerpiece would be a new Star Trek series called Phase 2. Woohoo! Which wasn't just a concept. Sets were built, episodes were written, a cast was hired, and I actually have a book, and I didn't pull it out, <laughs> about Phase 2. Uh, and what ended up happening later was a lot of the episodes that were written for, the, for Phase 2 were retooled as early next-gen episodes. Okay. But then what happened was Star Wars premiered. Yes. And the TV show was like, no, we're not wasting this on television anymore. Star Trek's going to be a movie. Mm -hmm. So literally in the middle of production, they went, okay, throw all that away. Because now we need movie Movies. sets and movie costumes and movie, you know, this and... So then was that, was, because they brought in the original cast then for the movies. Well, they most of the original cast was going to be in phase two. Okay, that's what I was Except for ask. Nimoy had okay. refused to do it. So <laughs> that's, by the way, why Star Trek The Motion Picture was at the time one of the most expensive movies ever made because it included the cost for phase two, a, seri a TV series that was never actually produced. So without Star Trek, the network fell apart and became Operation Primetime, a series of TV movies. And of course, the third time for Paramount was a charm, UPN, with Star Trek Voyager as its centerpiece. So mm -hmm. they just went back to the well on Star Trek. And that takes us to Fox. Fox! Woohoo! 1986 and ongoing. They spent $2.5 billion to buy six stations in major markets mm -hmm. to guarantee they had a foothold because 
it was felt up to that point a fourth network cannot work. It's just not economically feasible. And you, you can't get enough clearance from enough markets. So they're like, we're going to buy six markets. So they began with only a late night show, The Late Show, with Joan Rivers. And that was the whole controversy mm -hmm. about she was Carson's permanent guest host. And she probably would have taken over for Carson. If she hadn't yeah. done this and, and basically... Uh, they never spoke they again. They never spoke again. It was all this controversy. Then they moved into prime time in 1987, and they added one show at a time to a Sunday schedule over a period of months. And I do remember this, and I remember, because <laughs> I watched the Tracy Ullman show, which was one of the first shows. That was one of the, that and Married with Children were the first two mm -hmm. shows. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it was always, it was always interesting to see, oh, what are they going to add? What right. are they going to add? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so they grew over time to the point where they had a full schedule, but it really wasn't until 1990 when The Simpsons came on the air. And that was what made them a network. And The Simpsons are technically a spinoff of the Tracy Ullman show. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. So, it took uh, a number of attempts to actually get to the point of a fourth network, and now we have too many networks to count. Well, <laughs> at the broadcast networks, we have, we're still only we at have five. five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so... You know, you got the CW, and of course UPN kind of segued into the yeah the, C the, C the CW w. and the no UPN and the WB became the, the CW. CW. Yes. yes. <laughs> so while you're trying to figure out all the TV you want to watch, right. you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the pop culture bunker, I'm Mindy, and I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>